So, charging section is section 3 under the GST law. Then place of supply, we will see what is the exemptions from GST, what is the time of supply, what is the valuation, then what is input tax credit, most important topic, and then registration, tax invoice, credit notes, debit notes, what are the accounts to be maintained, what is an e-way bill, payment of tax, TDS, TCS and returns. These are broadly our syllabus. Now coming to, we will go to very fundas, very fundamentals. You might have already read law. You already read the law, prepared for law, prepared for GST exam. Okay, let us go to some very fundamentals. What is law? Because GST is what? Is a law, right? Is a law, no? Yes. It's a tax law. But what do you mean by law? What is meaning law? Law is nothing but a set of set of rules and regulations, basically. Provisions and all technical words. Let us understand from very basics. Sir, so it's a set of rules, procedures, regulations. Why companies act? To regulate the companies. Correct? Huh? Why SEBI? SEBI is there, no? Securities Exchange Board of India. Why? To regulate the stock markets. Correct? So, what again, what do you mean by this IPC, Indian Penal Code? It's a law, law of crimes. What is CPC? Criminal, I mean, Civil Procedure Code. It's again another law relating to civil disputes. So, if you observe all this, they are making a set of rules and regulations for different areas in the society. Correct? Companies Act to regulate companies. SEBI law to regulate stock markets. Correct? So, first of all, the legislature of assembly or the parliament where people, rep rep uh, uh, I mean MPs or MLAs representing people are sitting, they will identify an area which requires regulation. Correct? All these laws were not there earlier. Are there before centuries, thousands of years ago, 2000 years ago, are there any laws? There are laws. They are called custom laws. They are not written. They are not formal. But, but still there are some laws depending upon the area. They regulate themselves. You should be like this. You should be like that. It, marriage should be like this. You should marry only them there. You should live together. You should respect the, you know, uh, elders. All these are what? Is that we created? Who created all these things? We created ourselves so that we can regulate ourselves. So slowly, slowly, as the human beings evolve, all these formal laws. So law is nothing but a set of rules set of regulations regulating a particular area like what we have discussed so far SEBI regulating one thing companies act regulating something income tax act regulating something else correct okay then what do you mean by tax law see first of all why law why we need a law as we said if there is no CPC let us say if there is no criminal procedure code, what may happen? If X kills Y, who can do what? If there is no criminal code, if X kills Y, what happens? If two fights with each other, who will regulate? Can you say you are, what you are saying is wrong? How do you know that that particular thing is wrong? or a particular act is right, how do you know? So unless there is a standard, you cannot say you are right or wrong. So now the CPC says, killing, murdering a person is wrong, it's a crime, it's defined, 302, it defines, oh, now we know, okay, killing a person is 
a crime. Killing a hen is not there. Is not there in any law. Is there any law which says killing hen or killing fish and eating them is a crime punishable under law? Is there? So you are killing. If tomorrow there is a law saying like that, then you should not eat chicken. That is the power of the law. You understood? So what is law and why? You understood why? Why is law? Regulating. Otherwise, we will kill each other. Now there is a regulation. There is a police. There is a court. Oh, you are afraid. Okay. We should be careful. We should not do anything wrong. What is wrong? The law should tell you what is wrong. CPC will tell you this is wrong. This is wrong. Theft is a wrong. Murder is a wrong. Punishable with imprisonment, with fine, etc. Similarly, tax law. Tax law is a law relating to levy and collection of taxes. What is tax? What is tax? A tax is nothing but a money which is payable by a person. It may be an individual or it may be a company, it may be a person. Person is a large definition. So the tax is a, a sum of money payable by an individual or a person to the government. So why should I pay? Because to run the country, to run the state, to develop infrastructure, to provide facilities. Correct? They need money. What is government? It is nothing but ourselves. Correct? We elected them. Why? To regulate ourselves. Correct? Eh? So if there is an apartment, 100 people, 100 residents are staying, you will elect a society. Why? For your own benefit. You need water, you need electricity, you need cleaning, you need watchmen. Who will do all these things? Correct? Eh? So you need a team. So you will elect a body, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and you will give money. Correct? You will give money, contribution monthly, and they will collect money. For what? For yourself. They will use this money for you. They will provide you electricity. They will provide you the lift, clean the premises, provide a watchman. They will pay your current bill, maintenance, everything. Similarly, government. You are electing a team so that they will take care of things. Correct? So, tax is nothing but a sum of money that you and me payable to the government for various infrastructural activities. So, tax law, similarly, when somebody come and say you pay tax, you will pay. There should be a mandate. Correct? Huh? See, only when you are saying through through criminal procedure code that a murder is a crime punishable with imprisonment includes hanging, you are falling. Correct? Huh? Otherwise, nobody will fall. Even now it is happening. Is it a fact that all murders got stopped? Huh? No. This is despite the fact that we have so much of legal structure. Imagine if there is no such law. Correct? So similarly, to make you the, to pay the law, tax, there will be or they famed tax laws. Man, now it is mandatory. If you don't pay, the law says what is the punishment? What is the penalty? What is the interest? What is the imprisonment? Everything will be there in the tax law. Okay, fine. Then who will frame the laws? People elected. People who are elected. Like if it is a state government, ours is a federal structure. That means dual structure. Federalism, if you read the constitution of India. 
there are two system unitary federal in unitary there will be only one government for a whole country but in federal system it will be divided the powers the powers will be distributed between the states and the union government sir where are all these written constitution of india so constitution of india itself is a law it's our charter okay so in federal system the powers will be segregated who can make which law on which matters for example if you see seventh schedule of the constitution of india there will be three lists right union list you might have read union list state list concurrent list so union list lays down the items on which only central government has the power state cannot interfere got the point similarly state list only state has the power union government cannot interfere no you cannot interfere never concurrent list both will talk to each other and both may simultaneously do or they may say you do i will leave it mutual okay. this is very important in the context of gst law we will discuss so accordingly for the state list matters the legislature of assembly or the union territory will frame the laws for the cent central list or union list central government will make the laws it may be any topic msme now there is a separate law scst there is a separate law that was as we progresses if there is a problem with respect to a particular area they will identify that let us make a law so that we can regulate it correct okay so accordingly legislature or assembly will make the laws for state matters and central government will make for state central list union list items what are the various components of a law also called an act also called statute chattam hmm? act so what will be there in an act what are the components first of all any act will start with a section called one which says about what is this act is called what is this act which when you read something when you want to you buy a book how do you know what it is there should be heading so you want a fiction novel or a crime or a history you, know, you will have some interest so the first section what is section we'll see the first section first part we'll say this act is called the goods and service tax act 2017 it's a first part component second part it talks about the extent of applicability geographically otherwise to whom this applicable to which extent to which areas if they want to remove some places like jammu and kashmir because article 370 used to be there right so they have they enjoy certain special privileges so generally that is why we read the law set for section 1 this act is called so and so act and this is applicable to the extent of the whole of the union of the territory of india except the state of jammu and kashmir correct so that is the second component in a law name and extent of applicability then in section 2 they def they define the terms which are used in the act correct so we they, when you read a provision an act there will be so many words they say goods they may service they say appellate authority they say adjudicating authority 
they pay they say tax dues they say return they say assessment they say ssc they say assessing officer what do you mean by this when you say goods what do you mean by goods they should define no right they should define let us say if there is an animal protection act you should define what do you mean by an animal correct huh? whether hen is also covered whether cow is also covered whether lion is covered whether tiger is covered whether which are there in the forest only covered or which are as treated as pets are also covered ha huh? correct ha huh? otherwise what do you mean by animal interpretational issues will come you know the last thing interpretation of law what do you mean by interpretation of law what is interpretation perception if you properly understand that's a different story all these litigations will not come the problem is coming because you are not understanding it because how do you how do i understand because it is written by somebody correct when it is expressed with a proper expression with a proper modulation you may understand but when it is written it is difficult because your perception is different your perception is different you are getting the point i'll give an example in telugu word if i write rara r a a space r a a rara i have written like that one can read rara re rara see this is not a respectful meaning are you getting the point that is his interpretation that is his perception he is reading like that he may if there is a, a word like that in the act he may argue with the judge sir this says this is disrespectful he is saying rara choose kono now the other party will say sir that is not rara that is rara lopaliki rara that is the meaning sir so you should read in the context in which the word is used if it says dear madam rara now see read with the president word if you use the word ore then yes rara see this is called interpretation perception how do you read how do you understand may be different from how do you read how do you understand a particular language because it is written there is nobody behind the book telling you uh, you read like this not like that ha huh? that is interpretational issues okay so the act will contain the name the extent of applicability definitions of the terms used in the law various terms because every time when they say in some sections middle of the part they they cannot cannot again say here goods means this service means this no the entire definitions which are frequently used in the law will be set in one part and you will give a name definitions there you define for the purpose of this act the term goods means so and so service means so and so tax means so and so so when you go to another section you read goods so goods means go to section 2 read come back and then read so third part is definitions and then the regular provisions you are reading now section 3 section 4 section 5 what is sections what do you mean by section it's a part see when i ask you to write an essay how do you write of course on paper pen you only you will write but you may segregate into paragraphs or you will write line 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 all line for two three four pages only lines no gap in between will it be 
depreciable? No. The other person reading it, is it convenient for him? No. When you want to refer a particular part, how do you refer? There is no paragraph. There is no numbering. How do you refer? You will refer so and so page, 25th line. What is 25th line? Now start counting. There is no even numbering for the line. It is difficult or not? So when the act running into pages, if you don't give division into multiple parts, correct? Now let us take an example. You go to your wardrobe in your home, cupboards. You will have a division. Books separate, clothes separate, trousers separate, right? You have a division. Tablets separate, watch separate. Why? All you can put in one desk, no? Then it will be difficult. Correct? Similarly, they will segregate into various parts, various divisions. This is called section, one section. There are 200 students in a school. What they will do? They will divide. Section A, B, C, D. Correct? Similarly, the act will be divided into various sections. They will give numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, when you are talking about a topic, now you are given a number, section 4. Oh, you will go directly there. Otherwise, you have to read the entire book to find out where is this concept. Correct? So, they divide and give a number called section. Okay? Then, what do you mean by rules? See, rules are also called delegated legislation. What is that is called? Delegated legislation. That means, what do you mean by delegation? Giving your powers to somebody, subordinate to you. You may not be able to do everything. So, you will give some of your powers to next person. Correct? So, the lawmakers parliament or the state legislature, they, they will write the act. Income tax should be collected from so and so person should be collected. How it should be collected? They don't write. What written they have to file? They don't write. What are the contents of the written? They don't write. What is the method of payment of tax by going to a bank account? They don't write. Who will write? Where it will be? That will be written by the delegated authorities, Ministry of Finance, Central Board of Direct Taxes. And they will do that work. Parliament cannot sit entire year working only on this. They have other works also. So the rules will be framed by the concerned ministry. Or if there is a board set up by the ministry, that concerned board. Okay. Okay. Then what is these rules? The rules contain the procedure to be followed for the purpose of carrying out the act. The act says every SSC must file a return of income by 31st July so and so or by the, even they don't even say by 31st July they say at in such form and such manner as may be prescribed. That's all. They don't fix the dates in the act. Because if you fix the dates in the act, when you subsequently want to change, again parliament has to be assembled. Because act, they only can change. Rules can be changed by ministry or the board. Correct? That is the purpose. So, in the rules, they will say it should be filed by 31st July. It should be filed in form ITR1. For different SSCs, these are their different due dates. So, Act says what to do and the rule says how to do. Procedure, detailed procedure, step by step procedure. Okay. So, rules are subordinate to the Act. Act is the supreme. Rules are subordinate. So, therefore, rules cannot travel beyond the act. 
रूल के नॉट से समथिंग विच इज कॉन्ट्ररी टू द एक्ट अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज यू आर सबॉर्डिनेट वेन यू आर अ सबॉर्डिनेट यू शुड एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू द डायरेक्शन ऑफ योर बॉस कैन यू गो बियॉन्ड इट यू विल बी फाइल्ड करेक्ट सिमिलरली रूल्स आर सबॉर्डिनेट टू द एक्ट so the rule should be in accordance with the provisions of the act they can't be smart so if there is a rule which is contrary to the provisions of the act it is called ultra vires the act you all read ultra vires right companies act what is ultra vires beyond the power your scope is only that much you should act within that if you go beyond that you are ultra vires even the act should be within the framework of the constitution of india you cannot make any and every law which you want constitution is there okay so you the act should not be contrary to the provisions of the constitution of india if it is con again is the constitution of india is ultra wise the constitution courts can struck off courts have the right courts can struck off saying this act is not valid okay supreme court says no this is not valid struck off chalo over okay so everyone it, it will have its own yes now what is notification notifying okay notifying what is notifying if you go to your school or college or classes there will be notice board they will say class will start tomorrow at sharp 9 am it is notifying you some information right every day it is 10 o'clock but tomorrow it is 9 o'clock so they will intimate similarly if there are any changes in the law rules regulations procedures they should be intimated to me right correct okay? they intimate through notification they will say so and so section has been amended from so and so date earlier provision is this now it is like this that is a notification and then what do you mean by circular is a clarification when there is an ambiguity people are fighting about a particular matter It generally happens even law, governments in, on political front also they keep coming to the press and they'll clarify no 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 sir some whatsapp rumor is spreading that is not correct it can be oral it can be written they'll give a circular so this means this but this circular if the clarification is given by the board it may be central board of direct taxes tax loss central board of indirect taxes or by ministry of finance it is not an act try to understand it is not an act therefore it is not binding on the ssc very important the circular being clarificatory in nature that is board opinion understand that is opinion of the board it is not necessary that you should agree you may agree you may not agree you can challenge it in the court of law you can say no no this is not correct i don't agree fine but see circular being issued by the board it is binding on the officers departmental officers understand it will be binding on the if they cannot say no no i don't agree no you understand if your father says something this binding on you as a family member okay at least theoretically now you are fighting that's a different story but it is it has nothing to do with the outsiders they will say who are you to tell me your family matter you if what if at all you tell your wife or your husband or your children not to me correct so a circular being a clarification is only binding on 
officers department not on the ssc therefore an ssc if it is for his benefit he may accept he can use it otherwise he can say no challenge you can go to the court of law then what do you mean by press release press release you know what is press release sometimes when they wanted to communicate something faster they will come out with a press release they will be sent to the press through press it will come to us okay press release interpretation we have discussed now these are very fundamentals very 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 fundamentals you should be very you should at least know what is this without knowing going going directly into the section and with the, without knowing what is mean by section what is this section what is an act what is the purpose of the law what is the name of the law to whom it is applicable to which geography it is applicable okay yeah now come to taxation tax now there are two tax you know two types of taxes broadly you know what is that direct tax wonderful what do you mean by direct tax come on tell me huh see if the tax is borne by x whose pocket is burdened if the tax is borne means suffering he is taking the burden if the tax is borne by x and he is the person who is liable to deposit the tax to the government it is called direct tax because no third party is involved correct income tax who is liable you are liable for your income who has to pay you only has to pay not somebody else but what is indirect tax the burden will be x on x but the liability to pay to the government will be on y okay so indirectly it appears that directly it appears that he is the why is the person who oh, you are liable you have to pay is an agent who is actually paying x through y so indirectly who is paying x so the tax burden is on x but the tax liability is on y so he has to his duty is liability to collect from x and pay to the government you are going to the supermarket you buy product okay they will they are collecting you some sales tax gst etc collecting uh, the bill you are receiving okay so they are collecting from the consumer and he has to pay not you sir why like that then 100 crore people also get registered and pay tax is it possible no so i'll catch the seller because he is selling to lakhs of people understand administration purpose but in income tax why it is not happening like that because nobody else is involved you are earning and wherever third party is involved i am catching them in direct tax there is indirect tax also tds income tax tds is there tax deduction at source in what happening in tds you are earning the income but he is deducting some part from that income and he is paying you see the beauty so in direct tax law there is indirect tax mechanism also similarly in indirect tax there is direct tax mechanism also reverse charge mechanism correct okay so that is the distinction between a direct tax and indirect tax examples are direct tax or income tax examples of indirect tax all your indirect tax excise duty customs service tax vat sales tax 
everything. Now, what are various indirect taxes? So, what basically, what are the indirect taxes? Indirect taxes are those which are levied on goods and services. Income tax is levied on income. Correct? Huh? And it is levied on people or person. Here, the levy is on goods. The levy is on service. That's all. That's all indirect tax means. It will be either on goods or on service. That's all, nothing else. And majority on the earth, what we are doing is with respect to goods and service. And to some extent, immobile property, land, building. There is no GST on land. You understand? Because land is a state matter. That, that's a different story. Land Revenue Act. Correct? So, indirect taxes are predominantly on supply of goods, supply of services, import of goods, import of services, export of goods, export of services, intrastate supply of goods, intrastate supply of services, interstate supply of goods, interstate supply of services, supply of goods or services to SEZ. Supply of goods or services to EOU. So, basically on goods or services. They are called indirect taxes. So, before we understand or directly go into the GST law, what is this GST? Is it there from in India since 1947? or is there something else then we evaluated evaluated and then came to gst when it has come why it has come what is the need for it so earlier there used to be different indirect tax laws for different types of transactions activities see for every charge or tax law there will be what is known as taxable event. What is that? Taxable event. That means the happening of which liability triggers. The moment you earn the income, income tax liability arises. Similarly, for other laws, for other indirect taxes, also there will be a taxable event. For example, earlier there used to be central excess duty. Have you ever heard central excess duty huh? prior to 2017? Even now it is there on some products. So, central excess duty is a duty levied and collected by the central government. Basically, it is an excess duty. What is excess duty? Excess duty is a duty on manufacturing of goods. If you are manufacturing goods in India, you have to pay a duty called excise duty. Since it is being levied by central government, it is called there is excise duty by state also on alcoholic liquor for human consumption. It is a state excise duty. It is also an excise duty. But it will be it is levied by so because it is in the state list. So, central excess duty, it is on manufacturing of goods. What do you mean by manufacturing? Hmm? Converting something into something else. With different name. The resultant product with a different distinct name, character, use, purpose. It is called manufacturing. If you take a raw plastic and develop a chair, it is manufacturing because a raw plastic you could you will call it as what? Plastic. Correct? Huh? Can you call it as a chair? No. So name changed. Characteristics, purpose that can be used for preparing any product, but chair can be used only for sitting. Correct? 
purpose, characters, usage, everything changed. Uh, now you are set to have manufacture. There used to be a central excise case law, Supreme Court judgment. When you take a glass, okay, a glass made of glass, okay, with a raw glass, it's a manufacturing. Now it will go to another factory where embroidery will be done. Now we are getting all teacups and all with some designs, no? Right? So, so whether the process of painting on the glass or embroidering on the glass, whether is a manufacturing, is a question before the Supreme Court. The court said no. Is the name changed? No. Are the characteristics changed? Is the purpose changed? the usage changed, everything remained the same. It is not a manufacturing. You understand? Hmm? Whereas a raw plastic converting into a chair with this, this resultant product is distinct name, character, purpose, which has emerged. So if you do that, excess duty will come. Similarly, excess additional duty on textile and textile articles, there used to be separate law, there is the law. Service tax, chapter 5 of the Finance Act 1994, levy of service tax, when you are providing a service which is introduced from 1994, okay, first time in India, on services taxation, when you provide a service, it is a tax, there is a tax, we will see what do you service and all. And then central sales tax. What is central sales tax? You know, you all heard of this, young students. When, first of all, it is a central levy, it is a union list item. When goods are sold from one state to another state, there will be a tax called what is known as central sales tax. Central. Correct? Huh? Generally, sales tax is state matter, but this is, but the constitution says the central sales tax will be levied by central government, but collected and retained by the state from where sale takes place. Actually, this is again is the principles of destination based taxation. Indirect tax should always be destination based tax. What do you mean by destination based tax? It's a consumption based tax. It should go to the place where the goods are consumed. It is the place where the goods are destined. See, if you see the customs law, import tariff, export tariff. What is tariff? When you go to a hotel, you ask for what? Tariff, menu, technically. But otherwise, it's a tariff. What it will have? Huh? When you have 100 rupees in pocket, you may say one sambar idli. But when you have 10 rupees in the pocket, now you are cautious. You will ask for tariff because you want the lowest one. Correct? Huh? So, similarly, for goods and services also in the tax there is a tariff because for different goods so idli and onion those are same rate huh? no for various reasons correct similarly for different goods and different services the rates will be different if you buy a cycle there will be a lower rate if you buy a bmw there will be a higher rate because based on the capacity of the SSC, I will change the rates to generate more revenue. Correct? So, in central sales tax, what the, uh, the, uh, actually the indirect taxes are destination based taxation. Why I will tell you later. And it is a consumption based taxation. It should go, the taxes should go to the state where 
the goods are consumed the goods are destined why we will tell later but here you are saying the selling state will get the revenue not the buying state okay keep this in mind very important we'll come back to this topic then special additional duty when you are importing goods from outside india there will be a basic custom duty and there will be a duty called excise duty special additional duty which is equivalent to the excise duty for the time being levyable on the similar goods imported into india or manufactured in india sorry if similar goods are manufactured in india what will be the excise duty that will be levied okay and uh, there is this special additional duty is another duty where which is equivalent to the sales tax will be levied okay to counter the sales tax because if you are buying within the states you, the indian people will have got sales tax now you are losing it there is cvd one is called cvd countervailing duty and the other is called sad special additional duty countervailing duty is a duty which is equivalent to the excise duty for the time being levyable if the similar goods are manufactured in india because you are bringing from outside india i am losing this i am losing excise duty so i want to collect similarly when you are importing from outside india i am losing sales tax so they will collect special additional duty equivalent to the sales tax and then vat vat is state matter correct we all know vat no? till 2016 value added tax is nothing but sales tax which is applicable only on goods sir whether states have also power to levy service tax yes entertainment tax going for a movie they may charge entertainment tax they used to charge entertainment tax luxury tax when you are <clears throat> going to a hotel and staying there in some prescribed hotels like you go to nova hotel and stay you they will you they used to charge what is called as luxury tax so these are on services and then there are taxes called entry tax for example earlier <coughs> see in the in the ap we are manufacturing this product but you are going tamil nadu and buying from them are we losing right no you would have purchased here but you are buying from tamil nadu the goods are entering from one state to another state for that allowing the entry of other state goods into my state there used to be a tax called entry tax so these are various choose i just given a illustrative list there are other taxes okay <clears throat> this is how we used to work till 2017 so therefore one difficulty one drawback you can identify of this system what is the drawback so many tax laws so many following one law itself is <clears throat> very difficult correct huh? the various <clears throat> civil procedure or uh, criminal procedure they say they talk about morality right you should be polite you should respect each other etc how many are you following it's very difficult yeah when you get angry you even you even don't know what you are doing you can go to any extent you can kill also it, it depends on your mental status so following one law is itself difficult in all terms knowing it understanding it implementing it following it complying with it correct if there is an excess duty you should pay excess duty then you should file a return they will do some audit you should respond okay so much pressure similarly you have service tax then there is a separate law vat separate law special additional duty cvd customs act separate law luxury tax separate law entry tax separate law entertainment tax separate law coming to the state laws all state will not have a uniform tax law they draft according to their 
custom, their tradition, their importances, their government policies. One may give exemption for rice, one may not give exemption for rice. One may keep higher rate for rice, one may keep lower rate for rice. It is their wish. Because VAT is a state matter. It is my discretion. So, different provisions are used to be there in VAT laws. So, if there are 20, 30 states, if you have 30 state operations, if you have operations in 30 states, we should read 30 VAT laws. Well, I do not know whether the treatment for this works contract is same under AP as well as Telangana. I do not know. Maybe different. It used to be different. Different treatments for different transactions in different states. So, 1, 2, 3 plus 30 plus 30 luxury tax, different class, different states plus 30. So, can we do practice? No, we cannot do practice. Because one cannot be expected to know so much. Even if you read our syllabus itself, 4 or 5 books, very difficult. So many last means, very difficult. So, this is one drawback. Next, we will go to very important slide. Very, very important slide. Let us understand the concept called input tax credit. Some topic somewhere is there for you in your syllabus, but we will in one slide we will learn input tax credit. So the top table is without input tax credit situation, how the prices will be if there is no concept called input tax credit and this is with ITC scenario. Earlier it is called SENVAT credit. Before that it is called MODVAT credit. Modified value added tax. First time introduced in 1983 and then around 98-2000 they named it SENVAT credit. Sen means central value added tax. First of all, you should know what is VAT. What is VAT? Abbreviation at least. Value added tax. That means in each supply chain, in supply chain, what do you mean by supply chain? First, it will be manufactured by manufacturer, manufacturer, then manufacturer sorry and then it will go to wholesaler then it will go to retailer then to the consumer okay <clears throat> manufacturer so this is called supply chain so each point manufacturer wholesaler retailer will have a separate selling price right or it will be the same no there is separate this person's selling price will be more than this person's selling price this person's selling price will be more than this person's selling price correct so what value added tax aims is at each stage, let me tax only the value addition made to the product, not the entire selling price. Because the moment you say I will charge on entire selling price, my selling price includes his selling price. His selling price is my cost. So, what you are doing? Double taxation. My selling price includes his selling price and his selling price. Correct? Huh? Double taxation, triple taxation, four times, five times as the supply chain prolongs. 
correct huh? no that is that should not be done because if you are doing that what, what will happen prices will go up cost will go up purchase power will come down inflation goes up unnecessarily correct so to avoid that they said no no let us introduce value added taxation even prior to 2006 2004-5-6 all states implemented VAT prior to that sales tax it is simply sales tax means on every sale on selling price huge huge amount the one you are buying now for 143 used to be 169 why you are taxing on the things which are already taxed VAT so in the VAT system what they will say they will take your selling price they will reduce the selling price of previous one what is the net addition made on that I will apply the rate of tax got the point it is very clear no value added into tax got the point but it is implementation is difficult because I don't know what components are there in your selling price. Understand? I don't know what components are there in your selling price. So they introduced a mechanism called Senvat credit. Now that is what it is called now as input tax credit. Let us see what used to be there before introduction of this VAT system okay as I said in 1983 there was no service tax law only central excise law they introduced partially then in 2000s they have come to send VAT credit and extend it to service tax law also that means even in the service tax law from 1994 to 2000 there is no VAT system From 2004 onwards, effective Sunvat credit mechanism, there used to be Sunvat credit rules 2004. Clubbed service tax and excess, that means excise duty credit can be used for service tax, service tax credit can be used for excise duty payment. But before all these things, let us say I am a manufacturer, my input cost is 100, my profit margin is 10, my sale price will become 110. Let us assume 10 percent is the rate of tax, indirect tax. So I will charge 11 rupees and I will invoice at 121 and I will pay to the government 11 rupees I will collect from my customer and I will pay to the government over. Okay. Now what is the wholesaler cost? Obviously because there is no credit mechanism. Whatever tax input tax I paid what is input tax? Tax is paid at the input stage. This is an input for him raw material. Now this is an input for him. Okay. So on that input purchases, what is the tax paid? Eleven rupees. He is not. He is getting back. No. This is called input tax for him. You understand? The output tax for one person becomes input tax for another person. Like your process costing, correct? Huh? The finished product of one process becomes a raw material for another process so my output tax is your input tax your input tax your output tax is her input tax that is input tax so we have discussed input input tax we will also see input tax credit so 121 now my profit 10 my selling price has become 131 on that 10 percent 13 rupees. So, my invoice price 144. How much I am paying to the government by collecting from my retailer? 13 rupees. If you observe that 131 carefully, that 131 includes my previous person's 110 selling price, which is included in this 30, 131, which has already suffered tax. That 110 has already 
suffer tax how there see you there it has already suffered tax now you are bringing that into 131 and again you are charging double taxation the same 110 getting twice tax getting taxed twice one issue one issue issue number one second one that 131 include itself includes tax you are charging tax on a price which includes this tax that means what is happening you are taxing on tax this is called cascading effect understand second problem in the system second issue so consequently 13 paying so so far government has got how much 11 plus 13 24 rupees got the point let us go next level 144 okay this 144 includes this 13 rupees tax this 11 rupees tax third time you are charging the tax on tax 10 rupees profit 154 it has become because that 120 154 includes 24 tax itself that 10 that 11 rupees this 13 rupees had you removed it would have straight away come down to 130 something like that correct huh? on that 15 and again you are paying one more 15 now how much the government is getting 11 plus 13 plus 15 so price has gone up to 160 this is the issue is it lawful is it advisable even for the government or for the individual can you buy your rice bag like this no inflation goes like anything purchasing power will come down economy won't grow no no it is not correct so first they tested it at the central level see because you cannot directly tell the states you implement you implement means what you used to get 11 plus 13 24 plus 5 29 39 rupees now it will be different scenario tax will come down correct huh? from the government point of view decreases correct the first they said okay i will introduce in central excess 1983 100 profit 10 selling price 110 vat system 11 rupees tax 121 selling price 1 rupee. 11 rupees tax paid no government says boss your cost is not 121 take this 11 rupees as an asset i will give you back if you are further selling it take it as an asset as a credit understand in bank in, in your bank account what will be your balance credit balance debit balance credit it is to your credit right every amount deposited will be credited in the bank books and every amount deposited is debited so credit means here an asset government says it is your, your asset take it to an account called input tax receivable account debit side debit balance means what asset okay i'll take it will go to itc account any doubt so far no so my cost has become there why no input tax benefit there is no input tax benefit straight away you are able to reduce 11 rupees now your profit your selling price see the difference 120 there that is nothing but your input tax 
on that 12 rupees you charge from your customer 12 rupees invoice him 132 there 144 because we fractions we ignored so you collect from 132 12 rupees for your tax liability balance your price collect from the customer because see ultimately who is enjoying it should bear it that is why it is consumption based tax understand correct ultimately who is enjoying should get should pay for it so i am enjoying it i should pay for it so i will pay but from me from my side out of this 12 I already paid him 11 rupees, which is there in my asset account. Correct? Huh? Correct? Huh? I have opened an account called ITC debit balance. Now, this is a liability. So, I have a liability of 12 rupees. I have an asset of 11 rupees. I will adjust. Net government, how much I will pay? 1 rupee. What is the value addition? 10. 10 into 10 percent? That is what I am paying. Have you achieved the aim of value added tax? Yes. Beautiful, no? Correct? See, we have gone in a different way to achieve VAT, value added tax. So, effectively, on value addition only I paid tax. Correct? Huh? Okay. So now the selling price is 120. To me, 120. On 120, 10%, 12 rupees. So you should charge me only how much? 12 rupees. You charged me how much? 12 rupees. Now coming to you, you have to pay. 12 rupees and you have paid 12 rupees 1 from cash 11 from credit and at this juncture on this 120 selling price government should get how much 12 rupees have they got 12 rupees yes 11 from this person 1 from this person everybody is justified yeah I am justified because you are charging me only on value addition on selling price Okay, government is also justified because sell, see what is the tax? Some sale price. What is the sale price? One twenty, not one thirty one. That one thirty one includes my previous person tax. Now come one thirty two. He bought, but one thirty two is not his cost because it one thirty two includes twelve rupees tax. Eliminate that. Take it to an account called a input tax account. Keep it there. Balance is your cost. My addition. My selling price. My tax liability. So from them, let us say you are getting. So selling price. How much you have to burden? How much you have to bear? 13. So they will collect you from 13, 143. Out of this 13, they have already paid, that is called input tax credit. Right. So 13, out of 13, I will reduce 12, I already paid, I will pay. So government, what is the selling price? How much they should get revenue, 10 percent, 13. How much he got from manufacturer, 11. How much from wholesaler, 1. How much from retailer, 1. 13, matched. Any extra button here? What is the net value addition here? What is the value addition? 10. What is 10 percent of 10? How much I paid? That's, that is the concept of input tax credit mechanism. If it is implemented, this is the selling price, invoice price or selling price. Otherwise, my selling price is 155. Is it good or not? But 
if you see this central excise partly they implemented excise duty senvet benefit or itc benefit service tax also 1994 to effectively 2004 there is no senvet benefit then again partially they implemented then till 2006 there used to be sales tax that system previous table this system there is no question but then after even after vat then luxury tax entry tax if i am purchasing from a manufacturer i am a trader so if i am a trader i am not liable to pay excise duty because excise duty is on manufacturer i am just buying and selling but i'll pay i buy from manufacturer he will charge me excise duty can i take senvet credit of excise duty then no because that is a central law vat is a state law i cannot use the excise duty for payment of my vat no if you do that state will lose the revenue correct huh? you paid input tax to central government and you are asking me to reduce it how can it be possible no so excise duty will be there in the selling price it will be in your cost it will be in your selling price so on excise duty you are paying another tax called vat is it justified no cost increases yes selling price increases yes similarly luxury tax entry tax okay so there is no credit mechanism now you all understand what happens when there is no credit mechanism what happens cost increases significantly we have seen 130 154 you make it in percentage terms 10% is enough to destroy the economy correct huh? okay okay so this is the backlog so why we are all discussing all these things to understand what is gst why is gst what is this new system so what are the drawbacks what are the drawbacks in many of these cases in last there is no concept of senvat credit like entry tax as a concept itself is not there forget about giving in the act that provision itself is absent in central excise it is there some goods service tax it is there some services luxury tax entry tax central sales tax i'll discuss separately even if there are senvat provisions under senvat credit rules central tax cannot be used for state taxes state taxes cannot you be used for central taxes got it next what is the impact now you all understand right cascading since there is no senvat credit the selling price includes taxes paid at input stage very clear huh? Huh? since idt is a multi point taxation what is multi point taxation single point taxation multi point taxation multi point taxation means at every stage so in supply chain tax will be levied the moment tax bill event happens sale if 10 times happens in the supply chain 10 times long back we used to have single point taxation at last stage or at a first stage okay if it is a last stage if he doesn't pay if he absconds gone if it is a first stage subsequent value addition you are missing the tax both are not good correct ah huh? so they said no 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 every time okay so increase in prices inflation and a compliance burden you have to follow all these laws you have to read all these laws so gst okay 
so gst so excess duty is on what manufacturing goods additional duty goods special additional duty goods entry tax goods service tax luxury tax services entertainment tax so ultimately what is the taxes you are paying either goods tax or service tax is it not so why can't we combine why different names manufacturing one sale one import one service one in that hotel luxury tax cinema and then why ultimately it is what either goods tax let us combine and say goods and service tax that is the background so to overcome these drawbacks you know the drawbacks right there must be an alternative way of levy of taxes on goods and services which eliminates what cascading, cascading effects double taxation and allowing what seamless credit across the supply chain lessen the compliance burden excise law separate return vat law separate return service tax separate returns luxury tax entry entertainment tax entry tax so many returns okay increase the tax base now if you say so many things people will take risk and stay away don't know if you say so many things you have to follow now i'll take a chance for example tomorrow government comes and says on every income you earned for 100 rupees you have to pay 60% tax rate people thinking will be different tomorrow everybody irrespective of nature tax is only 10% that's all now people thinking will be different now people doing black business also will come and say no no let me pay 10% only you got the point 60% means who will pay 60 let me take a chance dorikite we will see and then you'll see there why i should lose 60 rupees for every 100 no way how many people will come forward so the more the complaints burden the tax bed, tax base will go down black market goes up correct huh? correct so the lesser the burden the more the tax base people will come because they don't take a chance for 10% why should i take i pay 10% i can sleep happily na no? why let me pay 60 means no way i will take a chance i am not ready to lose 60 rupees for every 100 rupees correct ah uh, so if you remove all this people will come forward let me register that is why you know every month you are saying gst collections increase 18% year on year to 1.6 lakh 8 crore for the month of february 2024 we started with 1 lakh crore 94000 crore i think now it is 168000 crores it's not 168000 rupees 168000 168000 crores i don't know how many zeros in it tax base increasing people are coming registering paying and increase the revenue to the government so what is the way out one tax one nation goods and service tax okay 1030 so we'll stop here so any doubt so far in today's class so one should have a clarity called huh? now it is 8k huh? 8k hd here they are saying right 4k 4k hd 8k hd ra full hd only 4k yeah? then we should have 8k 
clarity on the subject the crystal clear beautiful you are reading a word means you understood it when you are understood means that joy is different there is no scope for forgetting it correct when you watch a movie you will understand right for various reasons and you will you will not forget so easily right if second time you go with your friend you will be telling what is next correct huh? what dialogues are there what is the next scene when is the song coming when is the fight when is the interval block when is the climax whether after title is there any song you are remembering huh? because you understood okay so that kind of clarity we must be having to get highest possible marks okay okay we'll wind up the class for today okay ma thank you thank you thank you so tomorrow again